Another stint on Weight Watchers or Slimming World isn't what you need. Neither is a new workout plan from an Instagram influencer. You don't even need more motivation. In order to create lasting change, what you need is a deeper understanding of why you do what you do. The triggers that create the sabotaging behavior, the limiting beliefs that keep you locked in the all or nothing approach year after year. In this episode, we're gonna explain this in more detail and dive into why this is absolutely essential to your success. Hi, I'm James Davis. And I'm Claire Davis. We're the Midlife Mentors, here to lift the lid on how to achieve health and happiness. The balanced, no-nonsense way. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Midlife Mentors podcast with me, James. And me, Claire. James has just given Lola, our dog, a squeaky ball. So I thought it was really good timing. It's actually got no squeak in it, Oh, has it not? Oh, okay, that's good. That's good. (laughs) I just thought, what amazing timing to give um, our dog a squeaky toy right next to the the microphone. Oh. Oh, she's found the squeaky. Oh, there we are. Do you know what? We're not going to edit that. We're just going to keep it real. (laughs) Uh, Well, I was feeling sorry for Lola because, like us, she got very wet this morning. It was chucking it down with rain as we went to the gym this morning got absolutely soaked and um i had to give poor old lola a little shower as well which she didn't enjoy yeah she's got a little bit of a skin infection hasn't she, she poor has. little it's thing an allergy to something but yes oh my goodness the rain here in london this morning we were up at five i know we're freaks up at five and headed to the gym and finchy road doesn't matter that you don't know what finchy road is it's a big road very busy road and it was flooded so even trying to stand out of the way of all the cars that were going past, like literally spreading torrents of water over everyone, we still got covered, didn't we? Uh, not me. I canoed to the gym. <laughs> yeah. Swam. Swam to the gym. So that's what we've been up to. And then that's we've right. had Halloween. We have Halloween. But what are we going to talk about today before we get on to what we've been up to? Well, we're going to talk about, actually, we just kind of got on here and just thought we, we would chat away with the squeaky toy in the background. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, we thought we'd get on and chat about... The fact that so many people end up looking at the external things that they think are going to fix them. And in our, in our world, a lot of people look at things like the, you know, the new diet, going back on Weight Watchers, going, going on a keto diet, whatever, a diet or an exercise plan to get them, um, fixed and healthy and feeling better. But actually it's kind of coming at it from the wrong angle. And we're going to explain to you what, the angle is that you need to be looking at in order for you not to have to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and actually get sustainable results for a lifetime. That's right. We've done a lot of podcasts, I think, on you know some of the, a lot of the factors that work into these external things. We've done things on hormones, on metabolism, Everything. on your fitness training, on your nutrition. And all those things are important, but not as important as what we're going to talk about this morning no so it's kind mindset. of like you don't need another weight another stint on weight watchers and whatever it is for you you don't need to follow a new exercise pro- program from another influence you know instagram influencer that you've seen on the internet actually what you need to do is the stuff that we're going to talk to you about today so let's talk about halloween then Halloween was amazing. So we've, we've actually been out the country. Uh, I don't think I've had a Halloween in the UK for about 11 I or 12 know, years. I know, I know. It's amazing. I'm going to have to take that ball off her, I think. <laughs> that, not, yeah. uh, um, so we were here this year and we decided to do, I booked a surprise for Claire, which was the Haunted Hampstead Ghost Tour. So we met at a pub it in was Hampstead. It was great. Um, for those of you who know Hampstead, it's lovely. For those of you who don't know Hampstead, it's like a, a little village suburb in North London with, of course, the big famous Hampstead Heath. So we the lungs, of, lungs off of, over, of London, lungs they call London. it. Trudged off over the heath. Um, there were actors coming out and playing parts of murderers and highwaymen and ghosts. And it was just a, a really, really fun evening, wasn't it? It was really, really fun. Although very mild. Very mild. Very mild. Unseasonably mild well, for this time of year. Unseasonably mild. It is. <laughs> and then we are off to Ibiza aren't we in a couple of weeks we are very shortly yeah for a few months for a few months yes. see the winter out yes, over exactly. there exactly it's what we normally do in the winter is we escape the we rain do. like that we saw this morning we were kind of doubting it thinking should we have a Christmas here 
oh, you know, London's amazing. We love London. And then I woke up this morning and took that walk into the gym and I thought, uh, hang on a minute. I think we've made it right. I could be on Selena's Beach. (laughs) Hang on a minute. I think... In um, 20, 25 degrees. Yeah, exactly. I think I could could deal with Ibiza right now. Um, So... Is that all we've got to share with them right now? Of where we've, I think it's because we've been, been so busy. Um, we've been here, there and everywhere, haven't we? we yeah. Obviously, like, we're away. Um, we've been back. We've like noses to the grindstone since we got back. Taking on lots of new people onto the midlife method. So we've taken our new, new cohort of wonderful people onto the midlife method, which is just awesome. That's oh, going yeah, to take loads them, of people on this month. Going to take them up to Christmas, which um, is the perfect time. Lump, you know, some people say, oh, it's not a good time right now. They're just excuses. These people have joined, they've committed, and they are ready to change their body, their mind, and their life. So, um, yeah, can't wait to to see their transformations. Yes, and uh, this month I'm delivering a whole series of workshops. November is Men's Health Month, if you didn't know. So I'm Mm. delivering a whole series of workshops for a big city financial client. It's a big multinational bank. Uh, I'm in there all month delivering workshops for them. So I'm really excited about that. We're talking about men's health in general, the andropause, um, relationships and communication, all kinds of things. And we've got something coming up. See, we keep remembering things. Our our brain is like this. It's like all the tabs on your uh, on your browser open. That's what our brain is like. Um, We've also we're also working on something for you. Really exciting to take you up to Christmas. Yes, we are, aren't we? So a 30 day plan to take you up to Christmas. But we won't say much more because we we don't know more. (laughs) Well, we kind of do. Yeah, we do. We know and it's, it's going to tie into what we're going to talk about now. So that that 30 days, we've got to flesh these out, but it's going to be a lot around recognising your vision, right? So as Claire was saying there, when we when we look at getting in shape, we often look just at external factors. People think, you know, if I can just like look better, feel better, like what I see in the mirror, that will fix my problems. Well, newsflash, um, it won't. It'll make you feel better for a little bit. But if you're not working on what we call the internal on your psychology and mindset, then a couple of things can happen. Number one, you're not going to feel great when you get there. Number two, you're likely just to kind of fall back to where you were before or worse and it becomes then a negatively self-reinforcing loop. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason for this is, right, um, we are we cannot outperform our self-identity. I'll say that again. We cannot outperform our self-identity. As Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you can't, you are right. And a lot of people, you know, just don't look at what their beliefs are, what their identity is, um, right now and how that could be holding them back or even like you know what do I want my identity to be what do I want to release me what are my goals so success in any area of your life is dependent on you looking at what your identity is now and what it will need to be to achieve those goals and then mapping your beliefs to that identity yeah and also here's the thing it's it's the whole part about aligning your beliefs we've talked we have talked about this in previous podcasts but aligning your beliefs to actually the person that you want to become right and if you don't your beliefs always win out here's the thing it doesn't matter how much we act in a certain way this is why things like the diet the, the crash diets and the diet diet culture doing them over and over and over again doing anything over and over and over again without actually believing or adjusting your self-identity um, to where you want to go, it, it's kind of futile because the beliefs you have will always win out. Your subconscious mind will always pull you back to safety. It will always pull you back to the familiar. And the familiar is what you think about yourself. Um, and it's really, really powerful to actually start doing that in a work. It's what we work with clients all the time on. Mm. It's really powerful doing that in a work. Because we'll give you an example. We might have spoken about this before, but it's like the crazy phenomenon of people that win the lottery right but they've got a scarcity mindset because actually they've been bought up without very much money and they're living on the bread line so they win all this money and then what happens is they burn through it and actually end up more in debt look it up it's crazy but that's because they don't believe that they there's so many beliefs I'm sure in you know encompassed in that but I'm not worthy of that money I don't know how to look after that money Mm -hmm. you know I'm not a good steward of my money those beliefs are the things that hold out they're the beliefs that you have to change in order to stay wealthy in that example yeah Um, and it's fascinating thing right so um, we'll often look for evidence Our, our subconscious is an amazing thing like Claire said it wants to keep familiar we'll often look for evidence that the beliefs that that we want to have aren't even there when they are there. So let's take an example of something like, say, discipline, right? Um, And I'd say this is, this if you haven't got this belief, this is a great one to have. Believe that you have discipline. Believe you are disciplined. Because discipline is what will carry you through anything and spill into all areas of your life. Absolutely. Hooray to that. Hooray to that. But, you know, you might have a belief like, oh, 
I'm not that disciplined. Or maybe you're trying to convince yourself you are, but then you'll do something that isn't disciplined, right? So you'll, um, you know, you're meant to go and, and do a certain thing, but instead you'll just like sit on the sofa and watch TV instead. Then your mind will be like, see, told you I'm not disciplined, mm. you're going to do that thing. However, if you actually think back and think, well, hold on a minute, for the last week I've done X, Y, Z things, which are all stuff I scheduled them as disciplined to do because they weren't things that I you know, naturally wanted to get up and do, but my discipline carried me through actually you can see that evidence is weighted to the fact that you are disciplined it's just your subconscious will try and convince mm. you that you're not so you have to watch out for that very subtle trickery from your own mind trying to pull you back to that place of security and that's because as human beings our subconscious does not want us to change and grow that's because its job is to protect us and keep us safe which means it keeps us alive so we can be in a, a situation that really isn't fulfilling us isn't making us happy at all but to our subconscious, it's familiar. So it's better to keep us there than risk risk our, our, our very survival by trying to change something that might upset the equilibrium of it all. But of course, you know, maybe that worked back in the old days when we were hunter-gatherers, but not now. We should be growing. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, we were just on another podcast, actually. We were being interviewed by someone. Um, really excited for that one to come out. But we were talking about it's kind of... Um, I call it the bitch voice and the Mm. boss voice, right? So the bitch voice is the one that's saying, I'm not disciplined. Oh, you know, I tell you what, I know you wanted to do that workout, but just press snooze. It's the one that says, oh, you've had a really hard day. Have that bottle of wine. That's the bitch voice. And actually, if we can train ourselves, and it is going to be a muscle that we need to train. If we can just train ourselves to not actually do what the bitch voice is telling us and actually to try and do the opposite. If we can just have that as an awareness and think, hang hang on a minute, what is that voice telling me to do? I'm going to do the opposite because actually I know it's like James has just been explaining in a beautiful way. It's that subconscious mind trying to keep you safe but safe is fam- safe is familiar, but safe isn't always where you want to go because it wants to keep you comfortable and you can't be comfortable and grow at the same time. You have to get used to being uncomfortable. Yeah, your subconscious's idea of safe is actually probably Just being... very unsafe, right? Because it's keeping you locked where you are, which is probably in a place where you're really not happy with yourself, you're feeling unfulfilled, you're not hitting your goals. You know, that can feel very unsafe. Um, so... Let's talk about how you would do this, right? So you can apply this to any area of your life. This is what we work with clients with. Um, It doesn't have to be a health and wellness goal. It could be a finance goal. It could be a career goal. It could be a relationship goal. You know, set that goal, set that vision. Um, We're not going to go into that whole process now, but yeah, break it down into the steps. But the crucial thing here is to look at that vision and go, what type of person do I need to be to achieve that goal, that vision? What would, if that's in six months, 12 months time, standing there in 12 months time, who are you? And what can really help here is actually to, to visualize yourself, to spend some time in a quiet place, visualizing yourself having achieved this goal, but really see yourself having achieved it and really go into the, to the emotion of it. See what you're wearing, what's around you, how people are reacting to you, um, maybe like watches you're wearing, jewelry you're wearing, any cues you can get that will help you reinforce this is something that's actually being created for you. Yeah, Yeah. and I I would say on that, actually think about what that person believes, because this is what this is kind of about. It's about that self-identity piece. Um, And it's hilarious. James's emails just pings, but he always has a go at me for leaving my email. It's actually your email. It's your email on your laptop. It's not. It it is, I promise. Um, Yeah, it's actually, you know, about what does that person, what does that version of me believe about themselves? And if you can't put yourself in that position, you find it hard to really visualise um, that, that, that side of yourself, that, you, that vision having come true. Imagine someone else that has created a similar vision to what you have for yourself. What do you think they believe about themselves? Because this is so, so important. The whole point of this podcast was really from that, a, a place of passion that, you know, we keep trying to fix ourselves by doing these external things and by doing certain things. Um, but actually what we don't know is the story we're telling ourselves, our body responds to that. So the body responds to the emotions that we're feeling, um, the thoughts we're thinking. It literally corresponds to the nature of our thoughts and our emotions. So if you're trying to do something, but actually you're feeling and emotionally and your thinking is doing something else, you are not going to be what we call congruent. Mm. They're going to, you're going to be incongruent. It's incongruence. It's congruence theory, basically. Your, your actions and your belief systems don't align. And at some point, one of those is going to have to give out. And it would always be your actions that end up kind of failing, so to speak, because your beliefs are so strong. 
exactly that. I, mean, I was going to say, like, as, as a step-by-step process, r- real quick here, I'd say um, imagine yourself having achieved that future goal, like adding much emotion, as much detail to that as you can. Then the next step back from that is uh, what beliefs does that person need to have, right? And then be honest with yourself, like grab a bit of paper, write down beliefs I have now that may limit me in achieving mm. this goal, beliefs I would need to have. Those are beliefs you just start needing to adopt. Once you've identified those, we can start to change them. And there's a few ways we can do that, right? If you're doing this on your own, then um, the best way you can do it is take action towards your goal that's aligned with your goal and affirm those beliefs on a daily basis. And if you want to speed this up, you leverage congruency with there, affirm the beliefs while you're doing the action. For example, um, if your goal was to you know, make, make more money in your business, you could be like, while you're working on spreadsheets, which you've hated to now go, you know what, I, I, I'm really enjoying working on these spreadsheets because I see that how this is helping me get more efficient in my business and track my finances better. And then over time, you actually get to the belief of like, oh, I am good at doing spreadsheets and I enjoy doing spreadsheets. Let's see the benefit for me. So that's it. Align your actions and your beliefs. The other thing you can do is like use tools from NLP as well. And you can get an NLP practitioner like Claire or I to do this with you, or you can do it yourself. So yeah, very simply think, think to an occasion where you had a behavior and think about what the belief was behind that behavior. Let's use a pretty, you, know, uh, you had to do spreadsheets for work and you hated it and you messed it up. Your belief was, I don't like spreadsheets. But go back to that time and look at like what was a positive outtake from that? What, what was your subconscious trying to protect you from there? Probably so you could like shrug off having to do those ever again. If you wanted to reframe that now, you go, okay, well, what is, the, what is the benefit to me of now enjoying doing spreadsheets and getting conversant with that? Well, I can see that it's going to help me understand my business much better. It's going to do that. And then you can work on with reframing this, the belief. Yeah, and this is all the, the whole quick fix thing as well, right? Um, you know, we, we want that dopamine hit right now. Like actually doing, to taking that example of spreadsheets, doing a spreadsheet, I hate it, but the dopamine hit that I would have from doing something else that I enjoyed is immediate. It's immediate gratification. But actually, we need to also program our mind. I'll probably do another whole podcast on this at some point um, about that instant gratification rather than the long-term gain. Mm. You know, that long-term gain is going to give you so much more in your life. And actually being aware, again, of that bitch voice that wants the instant gratification rather than the boss voice that is like, if you do this and you stick with this, this is what your life will hold. This is the kind of confidence you have. This is the kind of mindset you have. This is the kind of person you will be showing up as. So there's lots of things that we're com- you know, discussing here and coming into play. But essentially, it's, it's really, really important to understand that you need to have awareness about the stories you are telling yourself. You have to have awareness about the identity that you have and the beliefs that you have in order to get what you want. Because there, those, unless you change those... They're going to stay true for you. Mm -hmm. They will stay true. You will keep yourself locked in that truth rather than becoming the expanded, fully version of yourself, which we all deserve. And I've spent most of my life reprogramming my mind to unravel and unpick those beliefs that I have about myself in order to become the version of myself. And I'm doing it on a daily basis. I still have plenty, plenty of limiting beliefs that I work on all the time. You know, I do my affirmations, I do my tapping, I do my visualization. Um, I surround myself. This is another really key point. I surround myself with go-getters. I surround myself with people that believe in themselves. And by osmosis, I then look at them, model myself on those people and start believing that things are possible for me and that things are going to work out for me. So I think it was just a really, really important thing to come on here. It's a bit of a chit chat, this one. Um, Not lots and lots of tips. I have got a few questions for you, actually. But, you know, it's more of a chit chat to say, just be really, really aware of where in your life you keep going for things, going for things, going for things, and then you sabotage them or they don't last very long. And you think, oh, my goodness, I've failed again. I've got to go and do it again. It's because your belief systems your self-identity of who you are is not aligned with that version of yourself. So if you don't change it, you're going to be trapped and it's going to stay true for you over and over and over again and you're going to be miserable and we don't want that for you. No. So I'm just going to ask, finish off with these questions. What's the identity, just have a think about this, what's the identity you have of yourself when it comes to your health and wellness? Do you constantly tell yourself you're addicted to sugar? that you have no willpower? Do you tell yourself that you're just built this way 
and you're always going to struggle. Perhaps you tell yourself you've always been the bigger one in your friendship group. And these have more power. If any of those resonate with you, it could be anything. But these have more power than you can possibly imagine. So answer that question. What's the identity you have about yourself when it comes to your health and wellness? Great question. I mean, I think what we're saying here is you just need to dig a bit deeper, right? It's easy to, to fall prey to going for the quick fix, the fad thing. Like if I just do this, if I do that, it'll fix me. Look for a solution that's going to address the deeper, deeper issues for you. Because when you change things on a deep level, you're building the foundations for lasting success. What's that? Change your thoughts and you change your world. Exactly. Exactly. So we hope you found that little chit chat helpful. Um, what I'd encourage you to do, actually, listeners, right, oh, it's kind of like going to winging it again, winging gonna it. Going to segue nicely into the into the the thing we're going to be working on is. Oh, what we're going to. Yeah, we're in the run up to Christmas now. Obviously, the end of the year is looming, so I would start having a think about what you want from 2023. What is your grand vision when you're reaching this point? You know, November 2023. What would you like to have achieved? What would you like to look like? Who would you like to be? And How would you like to be showing up? And what would you need to believe in about yourself to in order to achieve that? And what in your current belief system isn't aligned with that? So yes, we are actually super excited to to launch this 30-day um, method, program, plan that we're going to be sending out into the world for you to join um, because it is going to be addressing that whole, oh, you know, I get to a new year and I'm lost and I'm depressed and I'm disappointed and I've piled on the pounds and I'm hating on myself and all that ugly stuff that happens when we get, I've been there millions of times, when you get to a new year and you're just on the back foot, you're low on confidence, you feel like you've got no control. Yeah. I say that, but uh, this this is about if you've got a big vision for next year, then this is going to be for you, yes, right? Yes, uh, uh, I'm going to be blunt here, right? If you're thinking, um, like I just I just want to lose a bit of weight or I want to get fit, this is not this it's is not going to be for you. you. This no. is if you've got a big vision about growing yourself in yes. some way, about a big career goal, about a big finance goal, a big personal goal, just being a, a better person, then then this is going to be for you. We've been del- delving into our toolbox of psychology, mm. shadow work, NLP, hypnotherapy, all these things Stress we'll be pulling management. out. Yes, there will be um, movement and nutrition elements to it because we are holistic beings and you know, how we move our bodies influences our mood and what we eat and vice versa. But this is going to be heavily on the psychology and helping you achieve your dreams. Visions and vitality. Boom, Mr. D. I mm. got excited just you talking about it. I'm really, really excited. We've got so much energy for this. It's going to be... Uh, one of the best things we put out there in a long, long, long while. So uh, can't wait to share that with you. So that's a wrap. And um, we hope that you found that helpful. Listen, um, we don't run ads to this. We don't run ads in the podcast. We don't run ads for it because we want you to be able to listen uninterrupted. But the fee is if you could share this podcast, it would be absolutely phenomenal. Um, please, please do share, rate and subscribe to, to this podcast. Tell your friends about it. If you find it helpful, if you if it makes you laugh, if you find it inspiring, then please, please do give back to us because we do um, try and keep it as clean as possible. I mean, as in ads, <laughs> not always as clean in content, but as clean as possible uh, for your for your listening, um, your listening ears. So yeah, if you can just share it and rate um, and subscribe, that would be awesome. Awesome. And we're sending you heaps and heaps of love. Till next time. Bye. You've been listening to The Midlife Mentors with Claire and James Davis. We'd love to hear from you. So drop us a line at info at themidlifementors.com with any questions or topic suggestions. And make sure you join us on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can find us under The Midlife Mentors. Yeah.